how do we start actually monitoring that and being more evolved beyond this primitive mind that seems to be dominating us all the time? Yeah. So this two-part struggle, this, what I think of as a tug of war over your consciousness, right? It's not, by the way, it's not that the primitive mind is evil. It's not that we want to get rid of it. We need the primitive mind. It's just that we want it to be a uh, tame pet. You know, when you're, you know, everyone, we, we get in this zone. We all have these moments when our higher mind is large and in charge and we're doing the right thing and we feel an instinct maybe. We're at dinner. We feel an instinct to kind of be interrupty or to brag or one of these things that later you would regret or to name drop or something. You know, one of these that things the primitive mind wants to do because ego is just a little, you know, mess of an ego. And the higher mind says, absolutely not. Like just, just, just shuts down these impulses to be your worst self. Or when you're, um, when, when you're, when you should, when you are fighting against procrastination and you actually do the right thing. Um, when you get up and exercise, even though you don't want to, these are moments when the primitive mind's complaining and the higher mind saying, come on, come on, boy, here, here. And the primitive mind saying, okay. And you have some healthy system where, you know, you're going to get a reward later and the primitive mind starts understanding and gets in the habit that's when your the your your higher mind is running your psyche, and I think that when you start to slip, your primitive mind actually like it's like I think of it as like fog starts filling your mind. You actually lose consciousness in a lot of ways, and you lose control. And the higher mind, you can't hear its voice even. It's just it, it gets lost in this kind of you know whatever. And then later you regret. You look back and say, well, I, don't, I wasn't being myself when I got so mad, or. Um, you, you know, why, why you're yelling at yourself, right? So what's going on? I mean, it's a strange situation. I think, first of all, just to be aware of that tug of war, I think the areas in life where we take that tug of war really seriously, where we know it's a real struggle. I think eating is a good example. Like every, no one thinks it's like, I mean, maybe some people, but most, most people don't, um, are, are aware that like eating healthy and avoiding like high fat, high sugar, you know, calorie, you know, high calorie food is hard. Right. And people aren't like, whatever, just like eat well. Most people are like, yeah, it's a struggle. Like, oh, yeah, it's like really, it's a. So I think a lot of us take it seriously. There's all this, like, you know, we, 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 we're, we're disciplined. You know, don't buy, you know, don't put unhealthy food, junk food in your house, you know, because, you know, we, 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 we do things, we take it really seriously. And then I think in other areas, you know, procrastination, we don't take it as seriously. So we'll have our phone right on our desk, which is, but we won't have junk food in the house because we're not taking the procrastination thing as seriously. So, when it comes to, I think, tribalism and this kind of stuff, I think it's like we are taking it almost the least seriously. I don't think we think of it as a huge struggle. I think that most of us think that we are totally on the right side here and we're in totally in control and just other people, um, which is a good sign that we're just totally unconscious and missing it because I, I think that we're all, most of us, I, I put myself into that category, we're pretty bad here. So your original question was like, how do we see it? And I think that, um, you mentioned Star Wars, right? And like superhero movies. And of course, those appeal to us, especially our, they really appeal to our primitive minds because the primitive mind's like, yeah, you know, perfect virtue. And, and you know, and, and when you're watching a nuanced movie, it's like that part of your primitive mind's not having as much fun. And it, the other parts, you're having fun. But, but I think of it as even, even worse than superheroes. I think of it as a Disney movie. And I love, I love Disney movies, I, I, but I, uh, I, I love them a lot. And, and, I think of them, though, as something that is a cartoon uh, movie, not the real world. And that's a pretty important distinction that we should all be making. And I think that the problem is um, when it comes to, I think, in the U.S., um, anything that touches like politics, we are in a place I call political Disney World. And not everyone's there. I think there's I think of um, this is a, a big piece of this book is that there's a two-dimensional space, not a one-dimensional space. So politics, we think of as left, center, right. And um, and that's a one-dimensional axis. That's a horizontal 1D axis. Um, and that's not enough information. Uh, so I build a second axis. What I, I think of as like the psych spectrum. This is this tug of war. At the top, your higher mind is in charge. At the bottom, your primitive mind is running the show and everything in between. And I think at the bottom... You're, it's the way your primitive mind does politics, which is 50,000 BC style. There's good, virtuous, godly people. And if everyone just listened to us, you know, we would, and the world would be perfect. And then there's the awful, evil, you know, non-human people, these, these disgusting, use the word disgusting, evil people, whether maybe they're, maybe they're barbarians, maybe they're oppressor, oppressors, but there's some evil word, right? And um, that's political Disney world. That's not real. 
that's the, nothing about that is maps onto reality. Uh, and, and that all oh, you can, that's a delusion that you can only hold if you're really in a state of un, self-awareness and also of unawareness of the humanity of others. Uh, now at the top of this spit, you know, square, this 2d space, you still have the right, left center. You have, you know, people including the far left and the far right people too often, they say they equate, you know, far left, for example, or far right with, with what I would think of as low rung. I think of it as like a ladder look down here. And that's not necessarily true. Now, often down at the bottom of Disney world, you're going to find a lot of people on the horizontal far right and far left because it's appealing to the primitive mind. It's really, they're extreme ideologies. That said, there's there, there we at the top uh, area, which I think of as high rung politics. There is um, there's a total need for those. There's a total space for those. High, uh, far left and far right have a space in the conversation, and they can be extremely useful. And sometimes they're right when everyone else is wrong. So, I, I, I think it's important to have this two D space. And I think if we're trying to give ourselves a litmus test, um, there's a bunch we can talk about. But one obvious one is just like. Am I being in Disney World like morally right now? Do I? It, 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 it's not just about good. Are there you know? There, I think there's perfectly good guys and just perfectly awful guys. You know, um, do I think the social justice warriors are just like awful? Do I think that the MAGA people are just like the worst people ever? Right? Okay, you're in political Disney World, but I think that that is there's not. It's not just about good and bad. It's also the simplicity of a Disney movie. If you look like Disney movies, they have um, uh, they have weather that goes along with the scene. So when Simba is coming back at the end of the movie and Scar is running the show, evil Scar, it's clouds everywhere. So at the beginning, Mufasa, it's always sunny. You come back and Scar is doing it, it's always cloudy. Uh, the, the, the witch, the, the evil stepmom in Snow White, when she's in power, she's going ha 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 with her thing, pouring rain, right? This is every, you look at it, it's every single, every single Disney movie. Simba then conquers, literally as he does it, the sky parts and the sun comes out. Moana was another one recently. You know, she puts the thing in and suddenly uh, it's nice weather. So it literally, I say this thing, when you're political Disney world, um, you feel like uh, a lot of these, they, they, there's there's always cloudy weather at the political Disney world, a lot of the time because the, because the bad guys are making it so bad. The bad guys are powerful because that ruins the fun if the bad guys aren't powerful. So that's one thing you'll notice is it's never like, oh, we won. No, no, no. It's always the bad guys are dangerous. They're coming. They're doing awful things. And therefore, it's kind of like negative, cloudy weather. Um, and that goes into our psyche. And it makes us feel awful about the future and about our present and about our kids' future. And it's just like, so yeah, I can't, I, you can see I could go on a million like rabbit holes with this topic. 